EV of the year. Uh, I think it's safe to say that the industry is finally getting its momentum behind it and producing some outstanding EVs. Yeah, it's still a little early in the EV game. And I think next year when we do this, we're gonna have way more electric vehicles to test, but we've got two really good ones right here. Two great examples and the way we're evaluating them this week, the efficiency of the vehicles, obviously, the technology that each of them is packing and the overall drivability. How is their performance and what is it like? Yeah, and both of these cars, even though they're sort of on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of performance and price, they both excel at that mission that we set out to test. So let's check them out. The first ever electric vehicle from Porsche and one that we all pretty much universally love. Yeah, we've driven the Taycan a lot this year. We've driven the rear drive model, the all-wheel drive. We've driven this Cross Turismo, but I think we picked this one just because it's the prettiest of the bunch. That could be true. Like, let's talk about this specifically. This is the Taycan 4S Cross Turismo. You can also get it in the faster Turbo and Turbo S specs. But the one we have here is finished in this insanely good looking shade of Mamba Green. What are your thoughts on the way it looks? Mamba Green is amazing, but I mean, this car would look good in any of the thousand colors that Porsche offers, and you can even pay for custom colors. Plus, it also has some unique touches that you won't get on the sedan, like these 21-inch wheels over here. The wheels are specific to the Cross Turismo. You can't get that on the sedan. Absolutely, and then you also get this body cladding here, which you won't get on the sedan either. And the body cladding sort of serves a purpose. That's because this has air suspension like the sedan, but a specific gravel mode. With the wagon, there's this idea, at least from Porsche, that you can take it off-road slight off-road yeah it, like we've seen in a lot of crossovers porsche is trying to ruggedize this and you can sort of take it off-road it has a lift it has that air suspension so it'll go off the beaten path the interior i think is where it truly becomes a porsche especially with how driver focused it is and yet they've made it completely different from every other porsche in the lineup yeah it definitely feels familiar but there are really no buttons everything is a screen and it's really a good indication of what we're going to see pretty much in all porsche models going forward yeah everything is digital it's very futuristic but pretty much exciting as well yeah it looks really great uh, let's talk about the efficiency side of this. And the first point on that is this has 800 volt architecture, sort of a geekier term, but basically what it means is that you can charge this faster than most other EVs on sale. You can do up to 270 kilowatt hours at a time. Yeah, it's one of the fastest architectures out there. And even as the infrastructure improves, you'll be able to charge this faster than it already charges currently. So it's somewhat future proof in that years to come, this will be just as fast as other cars Absolutely. on sale. Speaking of just as fast, you like what I did there? I do. Performance, because Taycans are pretty much fast across the board. I mentioned you can do this in Turbo and Turbo S, but even as a 4S, this thing is ballistically fast. Yeah, after driving this around the canyons and just around town, it's almost kind of crazy that you can get a Turbo and Turbo S model because this will hit 60 in 3.8 seconds. Yeah, and it is ridiculously fast. It, it feels so good. And then you actually mentioned this earlier. It feels like any gas powered Porsche with how you handle it. And that's you know, sort of a cliche that we lean into, but they legitimately nailed this even though it has a big heavy battery pack underneath. yeah that was one of the things that Porsche wanted to do was it's not an EV trying to be a Porsche it is a Porsche and it drives like a Porsche and that's what you feel when you drive it the last bit to mention is the range on this car this is rated at about 200 miles or so but as we and many others have experienced in the real world it goes a bit further than that projected range yeah every time we drive a Taycan it feels like it goes a little further than what the estimated range is and I think that's true of this one too so don't let those numbers be the ultimate indicator now let's see its competitor maybe the most controversial EV on sale but in name only and that's because they called it a Mustang. Yeah, this is the Ford Mustang Mach-E and they really want you to know it's a Mustang right with this giant badge up front. But they also do a good job of incorporating some retro Mustang cues, like in the headlights and on the rear. I think it's a really good looking vehicle. They kept some of the DNA with the kind of fastback design, so to speak. But the obvious difference, aside from this being electric, is this isn't a coupe. This is a more practical crossover. Yeah, this is the first Mustang crossover and it is genuinely good at being a family vehicle. Yeah. You get the traditional trunk, you get space for five inside, and you even get this frunk up front, which is fully drainable. So you can use it as like an ice chest or you can put some food in there. Yeah, we also saw a picture where they filled it to the brim with shrimp. Yeah, that was really gross. It's really gross. We stick to putting drinks in there maybe. Yeah. Um, but aside from a nice usable interior, the tech is also really good in this car. This is the first Ford to use SYNC 4 in the tablet style 15 inch display. Yeah, SYNC 4 is a big upgrade over the previous 
easiest sync setups. It's super intuitive. It's really easy to use. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's just a really great setup. And then sort of also on the tech front, Blue Cruise is on its way. Blue Cruise, yeah. This is Ford's first hands-free driving system. Think of it as Tesla Autopilot or Cadillac Super Cruise equivalent. And we've seen it on the F-150, but this car is fully ready to go. So it should get it in the next few weeks. Yeah, we had to mention Tesla in an EV video, right? But Ford is working on the Blue Cruise stuff. They're excited about it. And it seems like they put a lot of development time. We're excited to try it out for ourselves. Yeah, absolutely. Um, let's talk about efficiency, because that is important here. It doesn't quite have the same architecture as the Taycan, but what it does a little bit better at is range. This car is rated at 270 miles. You can get a Mach-E that goes all the way up to 300 miles. Yeah, so the rear drive model will get 300 miles, and then you can get the dual motor one you see here that does 270 miles, but either of those figures are pretty good for the segment. They're going to do a faster version that's coming out soon. It's actually already on sale, the Mach-E GT. This is still pretty quick to drive. It is really quick. I think you'll get to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Yeah, less than five seconds. And it has a really low center of gravity thanks to those batteries, which means it's super fun to fling around. It does genuinely feel like a Mustang in terms of performance. Yeah, it's like more like a, a hatchback, honestly, and how it handles its weight than a full-on crossover. Absolutely. Let's pick a winner, right? Yep, let's do it. So this is our winner, the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Why did it win over the Taycan, which is a car that we all love? I think it won over the Taycan because it is the more practical of the two. It's still fun to drive. It's way more affordable. It's just an all around great EV. I think uh, I have to admit, I didn't want to like this car when it first came out. I'm still not sure about the whole Mustang thing, but you get behind the wheel for the first time. And this is truly a huge step forward for Ford. And I think it predicts a lot of what's to come with them and their future EV. Yeah, it's super exciting thinking about what Ford's going to do after the Mach-E. Yeah, it's our EV of the year.